to make a quick video here showing you how to use um, or an example of using functions in a spreadsheet. What I've got here is some data on stop and search. Um, you may be familiar with this, we've used it uh, before, but this is where the data comes from. It comes from data.police.uk and in the data tab that's where you can download data from particular police forces and in this case I've ticked stop and search data and downloaded that. So that's where I've got the data from and this is what it looks like. There's quite a lot of data here so the first thing I'm going to do is, is simplify it a bit. I'm going to uh, save a copy um, so I might call it working version or working copy, whatever you want to call it. And um, I'm going to save it as an Excel spreadsheet because that will allow me to keep track of formulas and things like that. Um, it will keep all of the calculations that I do. And it also means I can have more than one sheet. Now I'm going to start to delete parts of this that I'm not interested in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on this column here, outcome. Um, and let's just delete a whole bunch of other columns as well. I'm going to delete date. I'm going to delete parts of a policing operation. I'm going to delete latitude and longitude. Let's delete all of those. Um, there's an outcome linked to object of search. There's not a lot of that, but that is relevant to what we're looking at. So let's just keep it nice and simple. I'm going to get rid of officer defined ethnicity. Um, and um, that just gives us enough room to see this outcome column. Now, what we're interested in for this particular story is how many of these stops don't actually say what the outcome of the stop and search was. One of the the crucial points of stop and search is that there should be some sort of justification of the stop and search. In other words, we're interested in whether um, as a result of the stop and search someone was arrested, for example, or there was no further action. So the lack of that information is quite important. It, it really is a, a gap in the knowledge that we want to look at. We want to maybe establish the scale of that lack of information. And we can use a particular function to do that. Now the function that I'm talking about is um, called is blank. And I'm just going to check that this column is full first, column F. And I'm going to insert a column between these two columns. So I'm going to click on G, click on the column letter, right click and select uh, insert and that will insert a new column, a new column G in between these two columns. So I'm going to call this um, no outcome. Okay. And here is the function that I mentioned. As I said, it's called is blank. And to use the is blank function, in fact, to use any function, we need to start with an equal sign. I'm just going to zoom in. So you can see this even better. Let's just come out of that cell and zoom in a little bit. There we go. Right. So I'm going to type equals and then is blank. And you can see as I start to type this word, it's going to suggest it. And I can click on it and it will complete it as well. Now is blank is a function that will tell you if a particular cell is blank. So I'm going to ask it if this cell is blank, H2, and then I'm going to finish the formula by closing the brackets. So what I'm doing here is I'm using a function. A function is a recipe for getting information or, or performing some sort of series of steps. In this case, this function tells us whether a cell is blank or not, is empty or not. And 
to make it work, we need to put in brackets after the name of the function, after is blank, the cell reference, which is column H, row two. So when I press enter, I will get the result of that formula. The result here is false. That means, no, this cell is not blank. And I can copy this formula and paste it underneath. And it will repeat that for the next cell down. I can do it again here. Oh. And it will do it for the next cell as well. Now at this point, when we do it here, this cell is blank. So when I write that formula and I ask it if cell H5 is blank, I will get true. So what I'm looking to do is repeat this formula all the way down for every cell in this column so that eventually I have a column that's full of false and true telling me whether the outcome cell next to it is empty or not. And once I have all of those, I can start to count up the totals and work out what proportion of outcomes might be lacking. Now, there are a couple of ways of doing this. We could use the copy and paste method that I did earlier, but there's about 2,000 rows here, and I don't want to copy and paste 2,000 times. Another way I can copy down, which is quicker, is to hover over the bottom right corner of this box with the formula that I want to copy down. And when it turns to a black cross, I can click and drag to start to copy it down. Now that's useful, but there's an even quicker way still. And that is to hover over that bottom corner again until I get that black cross. And when you get that black cross, if you double click, it will copy all the way down until it hits an empty cell to the left. So it's important to do this next to a full column where you've got a column to the left that's completely full. When it gets to the first empty cell here, it's going to stop. But you'll notice again, every time you copy it down, it changes the cell reference that it's looking at. So in each of these cells, it's looking at the cell next to it. And that's quite useful in Excel. When you copy a formula down into another cell, it will also change the cell that it's looking at. So it's in um, a relative position, the same position relative to where you wrote the formula. So now I have a column full of true and false, whether the outcome is empty or not. And that means I can add these up and the quickest way to add these up would be to do a pivot table. To do that, I would go to the insert menu, click on pivot table, click OK. And I just want to add my new column, no outcome into the rows, that's what I'm interested in. And then do the same thing again for values so that it will count how many entries there are. And we can see there is um, about 200 cells where it's blank and just under 2000 where it's not blank. That's quite a nice couple of numbers there because we can work out that's about an 11th um, that's going to be about 9%, but we can work that out for ourselves by doing a calculation. Let's just zoom in. So equals 200, the part, divided by the whole, which is 2196. And the result is about 9%, as I said. I can change that to a percent by clicking on the percent button there. So that's a, a quick example of using a function in a spreadsheet. Functions are very useful for adding extra columns like this, extra columns of data. Um, and uh, it also makes it possible to create pivot tables using that extra data and make calculations of proportions using that.